Chelsea against Manchester United at Stamford Bridge on Thursday, 3.15 Eastern Time. Under the light. That is going to be a hell of a game. Manson Mount coming back for the first time to play against his club, Chelsea Football Club, Pochettino and Ten Hag under a lot of pressure. We don't know if they're going to be in charge next season so uh, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of things to to happen during that game if you want to help your brother out please subscribe to the channel like the video comment down below share all the good stuff this video is about head to head between the two teams i've already made my preview video where I gave the details and my score predictions, my lineup, and what I think is going to happen. So this video is just to give you an idea about what to expect. You know, what we've been doing in the last uh, five games or so. Head-to-head, -head, form guide, and all the good stuff. So let me just scroll down here and show you head to head between the two teams recent meetings let's start by the bottom one Stamford Bridge and it was November 2021 Chelsea 1 Manchester United 1 away at Old Trafford April 2022 Manchester United 1 Chelsea won. And then Stamford Bridge again, October 2022. Chelsea won. Manchester United won. And then May 2023. Manchester United 4. Chelsea won. Old Trafford. The last game we played against them again at Old Trafford. It was December 2023. The first leg of the Premier League. And they beat us 2-1. So as you can tell, for the last uh, five games, it's three draws and two wins for Manchester United. We don't beat them, no matter how hard we try. It's always bad refereeing it's always conceding goals the last minute or conceding a lot of goals stupid goals it's always creating tons of chances one-on-ones we don't score and we got a sucker punch sounds familiar yes because this is a chelsea thing nothing is new here all right Let's continue with uh, the form guide between the two teams. Manchester United in the last five games, they lost two in the Premier League, of course. And they, they won two and they drew one game. And Chelsea, they haven't really lost a game in the Premier League for a while now. For the last five games, they won two games. They drew three games. The problem with this is... A draw is not uh, a big difference with a defeat. You just get one point. And when you lose, you lose three points. That is the difference. So for me, dr uh, dropping point against like Bradford or Burley, you know, sounds, sounds like uh, defeat for me. It feels like defeat because how can you do that? And especially at home, at your own home. Against Manchester United or uh, Manchester City or Liverpool or Arsenal, you can understand if you drop point, you know. But when you lose point against the so-called small teams, you know, Burnley, Bournemouth, and then we have a problem. Moving on, the season so far. Position, Chelsea are 11th, Manchester United are 6th, 
game wants they won 15 games chelsea 11 games game drawn three for manchester united seven for chelsea games lost 11 for them 10 for chelsea football club and the rest i don't really care if we go to players compare our players with their players in terms of statistics in terms of goals <clears throat> in the premier league of course we have cole palmer with 13 goals nicholas jackson with nine goals rasmus holland hoyland seven goals in terms of assist cole palmer eight bruno fernandes six Connor Gallagher, five assists. In terms of tackles, Connor Gallagher with 68 tackles. And Moises Caicedo with 59. Bruno Fernandes, 58. So at least we have some positive statistics better than them here. By the end of the day, what count is point winning games and getting three points on the table all these statistics don't matter in my opinion let me give you an idea about what happened the last game away we lost 2-1 mctominy scored both games for united he became our our nine Ronaldo, the big Ronaldo, the Brazilian that day, he completely destroyed Chelsea Football Club. Cole Palmer scored for Chelsea in the 45th minute before the break. And the second half, we did the Chelsea thing. McTominay was voted the man of the match that day. And we dominated. We had possession. But what did we do with the possession? Nothing. So we had 55% possession, shot on target only three, nine for them, shot all together, they had 28 shot and we had only 13 shot. Uh, so as you can tell, United are struggling, but every struggling team, what you have to do is to play against Chelsea, Charity FC and get your mojo back so this game is gonna be a hell of a game if we are not careful we might get smashed by mason mount <laughs> oh lord let me remind you the table i already talked about the table so i'm not gonna remind you the table anymore we have just to do what we gotta do to win this game no matter what some people want us to lose so pochettino can leave but I'm not going to do that. I still believe that the guy needs, uh, needs sympathy sometimes when you look at injuries that we have. So if you look at the, the first leg here, how many players that are not even going to be there. Robert Sanchez injured. Uh, Levi Cowell injured. Not going to play the second leg. Two, 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 two. And you go here, uh, pretty much everybody else is fit. But what I wanted to say is, if you look at, like, Rhys James not being there, okay? Broja on loan, stupid loan, of course. And when you don't have, Ben Shewell is injured, right? Yeah, I think Ben Shewell is injured. By the time of recording, of course, anything can change. You never know. But if you have Inkuku, you have Rhys James, you have Malo Gusto, who is also injured, um, the game is different, my friends. The game is different. So I have to give uh, to give the benefit of the doubt that it's not 100% on Pochettino. I still don't like him, though. I want him to leave the end of the season. But I'm not going to lie. Okay? I don't want you. It's my club. But also I have to tell the truth the end of the day. If you deserve credit, you got credit from me. He need to leave the end of the day, the end of the day or the end of the season, 
no matter what's going to happen, even if he qualified us to Europa League and win the FA Cup, I just don't feel any connection with that brother, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mauricio Pochettino. But I am going to respect him and give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm.